Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Myung Sok, and uh, um, New Nguyen Kwok and Benedict. Good afternoon. And Kaelin, Kaelin Lee, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Do you guys watch Netflix? If you have free time? Yes. So what's your the drama or what's your drama this day? What are you watching these days, Myung-sup? Uh, I watch movies. Are you watching movies? Okay. Yeah. Any drama? Uh, drama, I watch it. This day I'm watching Sugiro Nusazema. Sorry? Ah, okay. Korean drama. Korean drama. Okay. How about... Uh, Ang Yan Kok. Ang Yan Kok. Do you watch Netflix? Any drama or movies on Netflix? Ang Yan Kok. Um, it's pretty difficult to pronounce. Uh, uh, Benedict, do you watch anything on Netflix? Uh, not since I'm in Korea, to be honest. Okay. What do you do? When you have free time, uh, going to the gym, meeting friends, eating. <laughs> okay, so okay, so you must be a little bit careful with your meal, right? I mean, yeah, you're kind of a yeah, wanna yeah. So you want to try? You may try to avoid some bad food. Something like that, fast food, yeah. Okay. I'm watching these days, um, Ojak. Have you guys watched out of the drama, uh, Ojak? And kind of, uh, yeah, caught him the drama, Ojak, so, which is pretty interesting, so. Anyway, um, yeah. Hmm. And young cook, and young cook, you're, you're from Vietnam? Trong, Trong Do, and young cook, Trong Do, you're from Vietnam? Hmm, you're not there. How about Gaon? Do you watch something on Netflix? Gaon, you are there? No? Good afternoon, EK. Some Korean students, most of Korean students may not come from Daejeon, right? Probably from other cities, Seoul or Gyeonggi-do, right? Some may uh, graduate from school, high schools in uh, Daejeon or um, Daejeon or some cities close to Daejeon. But actually, I, I lived in Daejeon until I graduated from high school. Then I moved to Seoul for college. Good afternoon, everyone. Joining now.
Do you have another uh, corporate finance class? I mean, introduction to corporate finance. Do you have another one? Do you guys know? Another class for? Yeah, we have another one. Oh, okay. I guess it's in the morning. Oh, okay. I see. Maybe the the way uh, the data uh, professor teaches uh, must be different from mine. I hope you get a lot from my class. <laughs> That's all I hope, hope for. Watching um, the drama Ozark on Netflix. I think uh, to myself that life is really sometimes pretty complicated, but turns out to be a really simple in a way, uh, because uh, you are not alone in this world. So somebody may come to you, yeah, as a rescue. So should not be always uh, it may be a little bit dangerous to be uh, optimistic, too much optimistic, but it is not always good to be a pessimistic. So I think it, the drama is fascinating. Okay, so you need to be always straightforward and try to be calm, even if you, you know, very, very dire situation. Well, anyway, <laughs> I must, I, I'm too much into that drama. So I'm talking about drama, even class. Okay, so uh, previous, the previous class, we tried to review the, the previous topics, especially focusing on bonds and stocks, but we couldn't finish even the bound part right so uh, today i'm gonna follow up on some questions uh, from the previous class and then uh, move to uh, capital budgeting so we i'm kept to continue on capital budgeting okay okay hmm So today's topics are a follow up on the lecture 11 first and then continue on the capital budgeting. The capital budgeting is still, um, yeah, continue to, uh, in terms of evaluation, in terms of, uh, um, yeah, in terms of evaluation, it's continuity of uh, the time value money, the bond and the stock. You can find pretty a lot of similarities in valuation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I like to I like to yeah I like to start with uh, this question in the previous class, All right? As you can see, um, the question is: interest, if interest rate remains unchanged, what is the expected uh, 
capital gain yield over the next year for bond P. So I thought of this question and the intention of this question is to ask how much you are gonna get from the sale of the bond P after one year, right? So definitely after one year, the value of the bond is gonna be lower than the initial price, right? So initial price is, initial purchase price is here, this one, right? And over one year, one year, after one year passed, the price of bond is, as you can see, is this one. So this is gonna be selling price. And this is your purchase price, right? So again, supposed to be calculated deducting purchase price from selling price, right? Then we are supposed to have a loss rather than gain, right? But the assumption in this, in, uh, in the, the assumption I made at the time when uh, I solved uh, this question like this is that I thought the interest, uh, sorry, the coupon, coupon payment, coupon, what is the coupon? Coupon payment eighty two dollars, right? It was already received by the bondholders, but I think the, the question may not think like that. So this coupon should be included selling price, right? So you purchase a you sell because the question is uh, over the next year, right? Over the next one year of the next year, not years, right? So over the, over the one year, over the one year, right? This $82 of coupon payment supposed to be included in the selling price. So then if you have a selling price of 1,044.65, plus 82, then you wanna have gain, right? So this amount of gain divided by your purchase price, then you're gonna ha have capital gain here. So otherwise, if you, unless you, include this coupon into the selling price, but there's no way you uh, calculate gains from the selling of this bond in one year, okay? So this is how I think uh, uh, we, we should solve these questions. Um, any questions? No, sir, it's clear. Okay. Explain your answers and the interrelationship among the various types of years. Um, yeah. The various types of years. Year to maturity, current year, the uh, capital gains year. Um, Year to maturity, current year, let's take a look at only these two, okay? Okay, so I try to, uh, I try to explain uh, the definition of year to maturity and the current year as, as fast as I could, but I think you guys may still struggle with these two terms, right? So, 
year to maturity is the total return. So once you purchase bond and you're gonna keep this bond until the bond matures, then the total return, which includes coupon payments and the return of uh, principal amount. So the total cash flow you're gonna get from the purchase and holding of the bond, which is divided by your purchase price is the yield maturity, okay? So your purchase price, because of the market interest rate, it did, because of the difference between market interest rate and the coupon rate, may not be the same as the par value of the bond, right? So yield, when you calculate yield in the denominator, it is always a purchase price, right? Purchase price. Purchase price is usually same as the market. As long as you purchase this bond in the market, right? Market price of the bond. So in the denominator, it, uh, you always have a purchase price, market price of the bond. Whatever it is you want to uh, calculate. And the denominator makes a difference between the yield maturity and current yield. Yield maturity is all the coupon payments plus principal amount over the, over the life of the bond, right? Current yield only, only one year, only one year, right? Only one year, only one year. So one year of a coupon payment, not principal amount. Okay. But the, but when it comes when it comes to uh, when it comes to calculating age maturity, this coupon payment should be based on present value, right? Not simply future cash flow. Right, which means that you have to discount this coupon payment at some specific, at some specific rate, right? Which is yield maturity actually. So we have we actually ba basically have uh, looks like this present value of all the. Um, present value of all the coupon payments plus a, a principal amount as well, present value of uh, principal amounts and the purchase price when we calculate the maturity. And this is gonna yield the maturity, right? So these R should be used in the calculation of this uh, present value of coupon payment, the present value of a principal, right? That's why we need to use how to calculate uh, this yield maturity using uh, financial calculator and all the Excel. But the, what I'm saying is that this is a how, this is, this, this, this is basically how we uh, get yield maturity as one of the one, one types of yields. So yield is basically return, simply speaking. Yield is simply speaking return, but depending on how long you keep the bond, the yield may have different names. If you keep the bond only one year, then you're gonna have, uh, uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna, you're gonna have a current year. And if you keep the bond, uh, yeah, to the maturity, then the return you're gonna calculate is called yield maturity. Okay, you get it.
Uh, this one is a little bit um, important question um, because the, because of the spot rate. So I think it, you guys basically understand uh, if able to calculate uh, the price of uh, bond as long as you are given uh, yield maturity, right? But here we do not have yield maturity, but we have a spot rate. One year spot rate, 8%, two year spot rate, 9%, three years of the spot rate is a 10%. So the question is a uh, bond X, Y, Z, when we have three uh, bonds and the coupon rate is 876% at the time to maturity, the same as uh, three years, what is gonna be the price of bond X, the price of bond B, bond Y, and what is it to mature the bond Z, bond Z? Okay, so spot rate is constant rate. constant rate over some specific years. At this moment, at this moment, at, at this spot, okay? Oh. So today is, uh, uh, 6th of October, right? So we are gonna have some spot rate today. If you go to some financial news site. So let's assume that this is the spot rate today. If you go to the financial news site, then today's spot rate over the one year, over the next two years, over the three years, is eight, nine, ten, which means that today we have over one year eight percent of interest rate, market interest rate. Okay, one year, and over two years. we have 10% market interest rate. And over three years, uh, sorry, over two years, 9%. Over three years, we have 10% of spot rate. So One year spot rate means that over one year we have 8% interest rate. And two year spot rate means that over two years we have 9% 9% and 9% interest rate. Okay. And over three uh, three year spot rate means that uh, over three years we are gonna have a 10%, the 10%, the 10% interest rate. Okay. That is a spot rate. So based on this information, over one year, over the next one year, we're gonna have 8% interest rate. From year one to from year two, we're gonna have, based on this two year, uh, based on this two year uh, spot rate, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, nine percent, nine percent in a spot rate, and from year two and year three, based on this three-year spot rate, you're gonna have a ten percent interest rate. You get it? Nine percent, eight percent. Professor. Yeah. It is three different bonds. Sorry. Like you have three different bonds, and uh, it has all of them have different spot rates. Um, yeah, we have three different bonds. Uh, right now, I'm trying to explain. Uh, 
the spot rate. Uh, we have uh, uh, we okay we have uh, okay um so we have uh, three bonds right and uh, for bond X okay it may be a little bit confusing. Okay, we have three bonds, X, Y, Z, and the coupon rate is different, but time to maturity for X, Y, Z, all three bonds has three year time to maturity. And uh, one year spot rate is 8% time to maturity, and two years of spot rate is 9%. And uh, three years of spot rate is 10%. Okay. So like it is for all bonds, we don't like uh, one line does not belong to one bond? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so basically um, this, this one, this, uh, Okay, you, you have, a, you choose, choose this one and uh, this one a little bit separate. So you should not, uh, uh, this, this information, right? This information, okay, uh, this one year, uh, uh, th this part is not, directly related to this uh, bond X, 8% uh, coupon rate. Now, now I understood. I thought that one year belongs to like the bonds. Okay, if it is two separate tables, it's okay. Yeah, a little sep yeah, separate. It did, but this information will be used to uh, apply it to these uh, three bonds in terms of calculating the price of a bond X, price of a bond Y, and the maturity bond Z. Okay, so yeah, I see the, this table looks a little confusing. So what I'm trying to explain is the definition of a spot rate. Spot rate is the, the rate over some specific years over some specific years uh, constant rate over some specific years. Okay, so one year here, this 8% spot rate is one year. So over one year, spot rate is today, let's say um, today, October 6, right? So today's uh, spot rate over next to one year is 8%. Spot rate changes every day because it is a spot rate. And based on, on, based on today, the spot rate over two years is 9%. Okay. And spot rate over three years One, two, three years. It is ten percent. Okay. Is what rate the same for us for this task as the market rate? Yeah, this is market rate. The spot rate is market rate. Spot is market rate. Over specific period, over specific period. Okay, so to, based on today, the uh, uh, based on uh, based on today, the market rate over next one year, over next two years, over next three years, 
A910. Okay. So when we calculate the price of bond, as you know, in case of this bond, uh, in case of bond, where the bond, where the bond X and bond Y, the only difference is the coupon rate, right? The only difference is coupon rate. So cash flow may be uh, cash flow rate different in, in between X, Y, Z because the coupon rate is different. But we need to not here. We need to discount these cash flows. Cash flow one, cash flow two, cash flow three, and principal amount. And uh, year one, year two, one, two, year three. Then we have a price. Okay. So for this one, cash flow one is we have we want to have a cash flow one here, right? Cash flow two here and cash flow three here plus principal. Right. So we have a cash flow in case of a cash flow one over this year, interest rate is 8%, right? So discount this cash flow one, we use this spot rate of 8%. Then we want to have a present value of this cash flow one. Get it? So to discount this cash flow one, we have to use the spot rate of 8% over one year. This is what we have right now. We don't have age maturity. We, what the information we have right now is spot rate only, right? So cash flow one, I mean, the cash flow we are going to have year one should be discounted using this one year spot rate, right? So this is not age maturity, okay? We don't have, we don't know the, the price, the current price. So we cannot calculate, uh, we cannot get the age maturity, but we have, we, we have the spot rate. So based using this spot rate, this calculation may show you that how you can calculate the price of this each bond using this spot rate. And the spot rate is the specific rate over some specific period as of today. Okay, so tomorrow this spot rate could change over some specific period. But anyway, using this spot array, there's also some based on, uh, based on today. So you, you, if you expect the cash flow in the future over one year, except one, save to save three and put, put principal amount, then if you discount each cash flow using this specific spot array, then you're gonna have a, a friend, uh, present value with it value of each cash flow, then you wanna, if you add all three number, number present values, then you wanna have a price of this bond. You get it? So, so for this task, uh, market rate, spot rate, and the ultimate maturity is interchangeable. Yeah, because it is spot rate. So uh, spot means that, what's the rate today? What's the rate over the next one year? What's the uh, market rate? Uh, what's the, um, the rate over the next two years? So 
uh, you you guys understand? You guys may the the yield curve, right? I I, I didn't we didn't uh, get in get deeper in, didn't touch much too much about yield curve. The yield curve shows that one year, two years, three years, uh, ten years, thirty, twenty years, thirty years. So yield curve may show looks like that normally. So this is called the term structure of yield curve. Term Tom, uh, terms means the, the um, years up to uh, each year, uh, uh, each, each, each maturity uh, period, right? So simply speaking, if you, uh, if you simply set the each term uh, by each uh, every year, then you're gonna have a one year, two years, but usually we do not have over two years. Uh, seventeen year uh, uh, bond, uh, the, uh, the the treasury bond. So let you usually if you see the uh, age cover, you usually gonna have some maturity in uh, one year, two year, uh, five year, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, something like that. So anyway, what I'm saying is that uh, this is when you go to look at the term structure of year, uh, this this uh, two year yield rate and a three-year yield rate and this percentage, this yield are spot rate, okay? So over the next two years, we are gonna supposed to have a specific rate of a specific disinterest rate. So, so spot rate is simply speaking, the interest rate, market interest rate over the some specific years based on today. So if you expect some specific cash flows in the future, right? For example, year one, if you expect the cash flow, let's say for, for example, bond X, you're gonna expect to, if the, um, here we don't have the, the power but let's say power is 1000, so then, you're supposed to have $80, right? So then this $80 you're gonna expect in year one should be discounted using one year spot rate, one year market interest rate, which is here 8%. Because this is a market rate. This is the market rate that you should you should use to discount cash flow in the future. In case of year one, any cash flow from uh, from uh, cash flow you're gonna expect from over the next one year, you should use this by rate eight percent. If you have a cash flow over the next two years, then you should use a uh, spot rate uh, two year spot rate nine percent. If you expect uh, uh, cash flow in three years, they are supposed to discount the cash flow in, in year three using this spot rate over the next three years, 10%. So if you imp you uh, using apply this each spot rate into this discount rate, then you're gonna have the price of this bond. So each discount rate is different, right? But we are gonna, at the end of the day, you're gonna, using this spot rate, you're gonna have this purchase price, right? Then you're gonna, you, you may think, oh, okay. Then what about yield maturity? What about yield maturity? We, we, uh, until this, until this spot rate comes up, we use the uh, age maturity to get present value, right? If we have a present value and cash flows, we can get yield maturity. But the thing is, the yield maturity can yield maturity can be used to apply all the cash flows year one, year two, year three. So yield maturity is the same, one single discount rate. Right? So simply speaking, 
yield maturity is the weighted average rate, average rate of this is part rate. So if we know this purchase price and the cash flow, then we can get yield maturity. Then yield maturity is gonna be some specific X percentage, right? So this X percentage rate, rate is basically uh, sort of a average, weighted average rate of this spot rate. So this spot rate over one year looks like this, 8%, 8, 9, 10, right? But yield maturity is gonna be a little bit, looks like this. So it, it just, it, it's mathematically speaking, yield maturity is just the, uh, the one discount rate that makes uh, or for the, the future cash flows equal to present values. And spot rate is the interest rate for each period that makes the present value of the future uh, cash flows equal to the yeah, market price of the bond. You get it? So whether you have one single discount rate or whether you have uh, several discount rate for each period. That's the difference between spot rate and yield, yield maturity. You get it? Hmm. Um, sorry, um, I, I, uh, um, okay, we are already three. Hey, uh, Jungjun. You you get it? A little confusing. Kyungjun, you are there? Song Kyungjun. You're not there? Hmm. Hey. Uh, In the if you go to a financial news site so and uh, in the bond section, so you wanna get uh, some you wanna get you wanna get yield rate right for each bond, but that yield rate is um, based on the Based on the usually based on this term structure we um term structure we hear so what I'm saying is that I want to break this one. Um, So if you go to, if you look up in the textbook, you may find that 
yield curve, term structure of uh, yield. So years of maturity. Okay. Um, the normal term structure of yield shows the upward sloping. So as the the maturity is longer, then the yield uh, the rate the interest rate is getting higher. So ten year, for example, ten year of maturity is a higher than one year one year bond one year uh, interest rate for one year bond. This is normal of what is sloping and inverse. And uh, this is the uh, constant, yield mature, uh, constant yield curve. We do not usually have a constant one because the market changes, market interest rate changes every day. Um, okay, okay. So what I'm trying to do is to explain um, the, the spot rate. Spot rate is the, the constant rate of some specific years on, on, the, on a specific date. And then this spot rate can be used to, to discount the cash flow you expected in that over the specific years that matches with the, the period of uh, spot rate, right? So if, let's say if you expect a uh, cash flow in one year, right? So then if you use a uh, spot rate and discount uh, this cash flow using that spot rate that you want to have a present value of that cash flow, right? If you have, uh, if you expect a cash flow in two years, and if you discount that cash flows in two years using two year spot rate, then you're going to have a present value of the cash flow in two years. If you have, uh, if you expect a cash flow in three years, and if you discount uh, that cash flows in three years using the spot rate over the years, then you want to have present value of that cash flows in three years. Age maturity is uh, you have one, two, three years. Uh, you have a three uh, cash flows, and then you have a present value of over all three year, over all two, uh, three cash flows. Then, if you want to know one single discount rate that makes the cash flows, future cash flows, equal to the present value, then using some finance calculator in the Excel you may be able to get some one single discount rate, which is yield maturity. Simply speaking, yield, yield rate of the bond. So spot rate is applied to each future cash flows for the calculation of a present value of each future cash flows. But yield maturity is to can be applied to all the future cash flows to make the whole, to make the the sum of the cash flows equal to the present value of the bond. Okay, you get it. Yes. Okay, um, I think I should move on to. Capital budgeting. As I said, I'm gonna send you all the questions and with some explanations. 
by the end of this, uh, by the end of this week, probably, uh, yeah, Saturday or Sunday, okay, for these questions. Um, then let's move on to capital budgeting. Okay. Uh, simply speaking, we, uh, we, we covered this, right? And we also covered this. Okay. Up to now, the key concept is time value of, time value of money. And using this concept, we talked about the stock uh, valuation and a uh, bond valuation, right? Bond value stuff. So anyway, we talked about stock and the bonds. So why, why do we, as I said, why do you think we talked about a bond and uh, its valuation and the stock and its valuation before this capital budgeting? Why? Why? If you issue star or bonds, we can have a money, right? We can raise capital, right? We raise capital. So bonds, if you raise capital using um, issuing bonds, then all the money will be recorded on the balance sheet, the right side in the liability, right? So all the cash raised using issuing bonds will be recorded on the liability section on the balance sheet. All the capitals you raised using issuing stock is on the shareholders equity. Right? So you have a bunch of monies from the capital market. Then why, so what, what are I gonna do with this money? What are you gonna do with this money? Yeah, you have to make investments. You have to purchase assets or what? Business, right? You may have a manufacturing business like Tesla, you're gonna make an electric car, okay? Or you may, uh, you make, you make a rocket or you make, or you make, you're gonna provide some services. Um, yeah, search engine services, right? That the services and whatever, right? You have a businesses. But you need money, so you raise capital, issuing bonds or stock, and you're gonna purchase asset that you need to run this business, right? So capital budgeting is this is a capital, right? Equity capital and debt capital debt capital and equity capital. Whatever difference uh, are, uh, there are between data and equity, they are all capitals. So we need to, but we, we, we have to be very careful with how we're gonna, how we're gonna use this capital in terms of investment in asset to run the business and in the end, profit, we make profit and this profit should turn into cash, right? And this cash should go to investors, investors, bondholders and the stockholders. This is a cycle, kind of a cycle. So now we are talking about 
we raised capital. Up to, up to now, we raised capital and uh, uh, how gonna, so, 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 as an investor, so if you have interest in some uh, specific securities like a bond or stocks, so how we gonna uh, value the stock or bonds and make a, a, and purchase them based on our value. So, so that's what we talked about up to now. So now the, the, the situation is that, okay, from a company perspective, uh, which uh, raised the capital, they're gonna use this capital to purchase assets. Okay, but we should have some plan, right? We should use this capital very efficient and effective manner in terms of uh, return, in terms of uh, generating profits for the, not for the uh, company, stakeholders, but also investors, bondholders, and uh, stockholders. But here in corporate finance, we have a more focus on stockholders and bondholders' interests rather than employees and the management. Okay. So for So this debt present value and payback period internal rate of return is focused on whether the 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 the, the um the asset you wanna purchase is gonna generate profits for the investors. Okay and how fast uh, they want to generate the profit. Wow. <laughs> um, okay. Are, are you guys okay? Follow me? Yes, Professor. Okay, I see many people yawning. <laughs> I see many, many of you yawning. One thing I found in this, uh, from the, uh, the, the drama, the Ozark, is that, I mean, the relationship in, the Amer in America, relationship between the parents and the children is pretty independent. I mean, not independent, pretty uh, totally different from the relationship between the, um, between what I have, uh, yeah, I'm as, a, as a Korean or as one of the, yeah, uh, yeah, Asia. So I found that the relationship between, yeah, children and the parents was pretty, yeah, pretty different. Um, life could be also kind of kept a positive in some sense. Do you guys have your own asset, right? You guys have your own asset. Um, but but you're gonna but if but you 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 gonna you guys are gonna well, after graduation you you guys work for a company or you wanna run your own business then which means that you wanna make a lot of money in the future, right? Um, the depending on, but your investment, uh, one of people who, uh, it includes uh, your education, right? So if you have, if you think of your education as a kind of investment into the, in, into the business, into the um, entity, you, you are, you oh, entity, you guys are all natural entity, right? Because uh, as an entity, as a natural entity, individual, which is called individual, you have your own judgment, you have your own choices, you have your own, own directions in life, right? So 
considering you're in some sense depending on your ambition what what you want to be and what you want to achieve in the future in term uh, when it comes to making money i think uh, a life could be uh, could be viewed as a kind of a, uh, a investment in on entity and the capital budget okay I, i'm gonna uh, keep i'm gonna I keep talking. I'm gonna uh, try to relate uh, how yeah, this concept to the uh, financial and uh, this capital building a little bit later. Um, I think we talked about up to here, right? The present value and uh, payback period, right? Right, I think uh, we uh, covered up to here. So we stopped the uh, uh, internal rate of return in the previous uh, capital budgeting class, IRR. Internal rate of return is basically same as yield maturity, right? The only difference is that whether we are going, we are talking about bond or we are talking about any uh, asset. Here, asset could be a project. Project is a, a bunch of assets, right? Project is a huge investment. The asset or could be investment. Investment, um, yeah. Investments are a little bit sounds uh, yeah too broad so asset right and um, liability and equity balance sheet. Bond versus asset. So this internal rate of return, the concept internal rate of return is pretty similar to it maturity. Why? If you invest in bond, you are supposed to cash flows of coupon, right? Coupons and uh, principal amount, right? And using this yield maturity, you are supposed to have a present value of this bond, right? And so this is the investors. So this is where invest the case where investors has some pockets in their some money in their pockets, right? So then they're gonna use this money in purchasing bonds based on the future cash flows for a bond and the, the principal amount using uh, discount and uh, discounted at it maturity. Right. And now the company, right? Company has the money. The money borrowed from these investors issuing this bond. Right? So company has money. And they're gonna use this money to purchase some asset. Right, then the asset supposed to generate profits in the future, like bond generates cash flows of a coupon. So we do not call the cash generated from asset coupon. We simply say cash flows from the investment from the from the from a specific project. Right. For example, the Tesla 
is going to set up new factory in Berlin, right? Gigafactory, right? Huge amount of investment, right? Let's say an investor make a huge amount of investment, a huge amount, spent a huge amount of money purchasing bond. Likewise, company spend a huge amount of money setting up a factory in Berlin, right? So in terms of expansion money, same. And as the bond generate cash flows, which is called bond, which is called the coupon, this project, I mean the Gigafactory, supposed to generate cash flows, right? So then when when it, when we make a valuation of the bond. We use the we use the uh, base interest rate. I mean, which is a uh, uh, treasury rate and all other risks. So we use the market interest rate, simply speaking. Okay, to get to get the value of the bond, right? In capital budgeting, okay, um, based on some experience, the past experience, the company may forecast some cute future cash flows from the project, for example, factory, right? You got factory in Berlin. So then how do we gonna value this project? Then the question is, okay, so since you have cash flows, you have to you have to discount these cash flows. So then the present value of these cash flows is going to be value of this project, value of this, yeah, investment. Okay. So the discount rate the discount rate used to present value of the project, uh, the discount rate, yeah, the, the, the discount that uh, used to uh, uh, calculate the present value of the project is called internal rate of return in the capital budgeting. So in the bond valuation, the interest rate, discount rate, that makes the present value of the cash flow is, I mean, the, the maturity is the, the discount rate that makes the present value of the future cash flow, right? So in conceptually, it maturity and the internal rate of return is the same then why, why this is called internal rate of return? Why this is called internal rate of return? Internal rate of return, mm, This is kind of a, a which one, the chicken or eggs, which one is from first, but okay. Internal rate of return is the, as the uh, yield maturity is the single discount rate, right? Single discount rate. We have only one single internal rate of return for one project, for each project. So, but it's when you have cash flows, different cash flow in the future, if you discount these cash flows in the future using this one single internal rate of return, you want to have a present value of this whole cash flows 
from this project. Likewise, if you discount the cash flows from bonds using one specific yield maturity, you're gonna have the present value of this bond, right? So in the sense, yield maturity and uh, interval of term as a single discount rate of future, future, cash flow, future cash flows, they are conceptually same, right? The only difference is one is uh, uh, cash flow from bond, the other one is cash flow from project, huge investment such as a factory or uh, any productive uh, yeah, assets, right? So as we uh, calculated, as we uh, get you know, calculated, as we calculate, uh, as we um, calculate the uh, maturity, we first need to know the present value or a price of the bond, right? To get yield maturity. Likewise, we should know the present value of the project uh, to get the yield, uh, internal rate of return from, uh, uh, fr from, uh, from this in investment because we uh, focus the cash flows, right? So as we, as we knew the, pre, the market price or present value of the bond, we first need to know the present value of the some project to get internal rate of return. So once we know the present value of this project, then and the cash flows, future cash flows, then we can get internal rate of return. And this internal rate of return is the exactly the same way we get it maturity in the bond. Epigeni, Epigeni Kim, you get it? Epigeni, 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 Epigeni Kim? Oh, you're not there? Who? Who Jan? Who Jan? You are there? Hmm. You jump. You jump there. Hey, do Minja? Yes, Professor. You follow me? Yes. Okay. How about Chongin? Do you follow me? Are you following me? Yes, Professor. Okay, how about Yana? Yes. Okay. And uh, the, the, the difference, is, uh, and here, Internal rate of returns are a little bit different in uh, from this uh, age maturity is that uh, age uh, the internal rate of return is the discount rate that makes the future cash flow present value of future cash flows equal to the net present value. The net present value is as you know, as we did, it, net present value is the The product market value minus its cost. Why is market value? Because it is discounted at market, uh, supposed to be, uh, supposed uh, it is discounted at ma market interest rate. Usually, um, depend, when you discount this cash flow, they also use the uh, term structure of interest rate. Uh, so every, is getting complicated, but anyway, uh, when 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 this when uh, this product market value the uh, for each cash flow the different discount rate may be applied. Okay, so anyway, um, this is present value of all cash flows minus initial investment. Initial investment. 
then you have a net present value. So net present value, not just present value, net present value is that uh, it, mean, it means that you deduct the initial, uh, initial investment from the whole present value of cash flows, okay? So that is the net present value. So internal rate of return is the rate that makes the whole, makes the, the present value of whole cash flows equal to the net present value. This is pretty simple, right? I mean, it maturity, let's say you purchased some uh, pers um, um, bond at a specific price, right? So the, the, the only invest, the only, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, that's the kind of, uh, that should be the whole, this should be, uh, this should be understood as same as net present value, right? If you uh, put this uh, uh, purchase price of bond in the same line, on the same line as net present value and uh, uh, coupon payment year one, year two, while the coupon payment is the same, if you apply it maturity, you know, counting, discounting in each uh, future cash, uh, future coupon payment that you're gonna have uh, this principle, you want to have the yeah present value uh, present value of this uh, bond, but yeah, this is just the present value of this bond or price uh, market price of this bond. Um, but the only difference uh, in terms of uh, internal rate of return is that because we have uh, initial investment, so initial investment should be deducted. Uh, from the whole future um, present value of the future cash flows. Okay, that that is the only difference. Hmm. Based on the IR rule, investment is acceptable by IR exceeds the required return. It should be rejected otherwise. Okay. Uh, as we learn here, when that present value is positive, which means that the present value of all of the future cash flows, discounted future cash flows, is higher than initial investment, right? So as far as the net present value is uh, positive, then you have uh, good project, profitable project, right? You actually make money. Here, internal rate of return is defined as the rate that makes the present values of future cash flows equal to the net present value, right? Right? So any specific internal rate will make the future cash flow, uh, the, the, the sum of the uh, present value of the future cash flows equal to net present value. Okay. Uh, this one is initial. Sorry. But this, uh, this one is initial investment. Initial investment. So up to now, uh, up to now, this one, okay, this part. This part, the present value of this part, okay, present value of the future cash flows, 
discounted at internal rate of return should be the same, uh, should be the same, uh, to calculate the internal rate of return should be the same as the initial investment. So then if you add this initial investment, uh, this initial investment should be supposed to be minus, right? So then you're supposed to have a zero. Simply speaking, actually, I, I, I made a little bit, um, make you guys a little bit confused in explaining the internal rate of return. When I say the sum of the future uh, present values of the uh, future cash flows discount the interest rate equal to net present value, the net present value is supposed to be zero. Why? Because of, because of this sentence. Uh, to make the internal rate of return is meaningful, to make this internal rate, rate of return is meaningful, you have, uh, we need to make this interval of the meaning in terms of uh, in terms of uh, a comparison of this interval rate of the internal rate of return versus versus required rate of return okay um first thing we start should start again as far as net present value is a higher than zero, right? The project is gold, right? If the net present value is lower than zero, you should not take this project, right? So accept or reject. So the threshold is net present threshold is zero. So if the net present, if the uh, net present value is higher than zero, higher than zero, then you take the project. If the net present value is lower than zero, you don't take the project, right? So threshold is zero. That that zero net present value is going to be threshold, right? So internal rate of return is the rate then uh, the rate that makes the sum of the present value of the future cash flow equal to net present value, right? But if we, if we set the present value zero, which is a threshold amount, right? Threshold amount, then internal rate of return could be a good uh, kind of a good criteria in determining whether you're gonna take whether or not you take the project. Why? Okay. Let's say internal rate of return that makes the present value, some of the present value of the future cash flows equal zero net present value is let's say 10%. Okay, 10%. Okay, let's assume that 10% internal rate of return makes the whole sum of the uh, present value of the future cash flows zero. Okay, threshold zero reaches, the present value of zero reaches, the present value reaches zero when we discount future cash flows at 10%, this single interest rate, this single discount rate, right? And then what if this internal rate of return is lower than 10%, let's say 9%. If we use while the cash flow is the same, if we use the internal rate, if you use 9% internal rate of return, then 
what is going to be the net present value? Should it be higher than zero or lower than zero if the internal value return is lower than 10 percent? When if you use a 10 percent as internal value return, the net present value is zero. What is going to happen if you use 9% as internal value return in discounting future cash flows to the present value? What, happen, what is going to happen to net present value if the internal value return is 9% rather than 10 instead of 10%? Net present value is going to be higher than zero or lower than zero? Higher? Yeah, higher than zero. Why? Because you discount lower rate, lower, lower rate, right? So, as far as, let's say this 9% is the the rate kind of a cost of capital. Cost of capital. You raise the capital issuing stock or issuing bond. Okay, for for simplest for simply speaking, for make the thing simple, you raise the capital issuing bonds. Okay, and the coupon rate is 5%. Okay, so you, your capital, if 100% of your capital comes from bond, which whose coupon rate is 5%, which means that you should pay 5% of the coupon payment every year. I'm a whole every year, let's say maturity is five years, okay? So up to five, you have to pay 5% uh, of the coupon payment to the bondholders creditors. So let's say this product also had the same period of uh, project has same period of five years of same, uh, five, five years of investment period. So over the next five years, you can expect some cash flows from this investment using the capital from bond and uh, the bond uh, debt, uh, debt the, the debt cap uh, yeah debt capital. So let's say so the if the when uh, uh, when when the uh, when the internal rate of return which makes the uh, cash flows from this project, present value of, uh, of a cash flow pro from project is 9% and the debt present value is positive, right? And uh, your cost of capital is just a 5%, right? So then uh, you wanna take or even an uh, even zero, right? Even their present, even their present value is zero using uh, nine percent or ten percent as internal rate of return. When your cost of capital is just a five percent, right? Then you wanna take this project. Why? Because when you Discount its cash flows nine percent or ten percent, whether nine percent, ten percent, as by as uh, as by the, this uh, internal rate of return. I mean, it, as by as okay, let, let's say internal rate of nine and ten percent, right? Ten percent is to make the uh, future uh, the uh, current uh, the present value of the future cash flows. Uh, uh, zero, right? But then if you apply this cost of capital 
5%, then you are definitely have a positive amount, positive net present value. This 5% means, 5% five cost of capital means that every, even uh, you're, you're gonna have after, you, you are supposed to have 5% uh, MPV, let's say 20 and 10%, MPV zero, right? If IRR is internal rate is 10%, that present value is zero, right? If then in discount rate is lower than internal rate of return, you are supposed to have a positive net present value, right? Let's assume that which that present value is uh, based on this 5% is 20. So then you have the difference between the two 20. You have the profit of 20. Okay. So you are supposed to take this project because if you use this cost of capital 5%, right? Then you still have a profit. So based on the IRR rule, our investment is acceptable if the IRR exceeds the required return or cost of capital. It should be rejected otherwise because if IRR If cost of capital is higher than IRR, then you're gonna have a negative net present value, which means that you're gonna lose money from the project. Okay. So this internal rate of return is closely related to net present value. So IRR, net present value, should have understood in the in the changeable. The first thing you should know is that as far as the net present value is positive, which means that the present value of all, of all some of the present value or the future cash flow is higher than initial investment or cost of uh, the whole project, then you make money, you are profitable, then you are supposed to take the project. In terms of IRR, as far as uh, the, disc, the, the required return or the cost of capital is lower than IRR, which makes the net present value equals to zero, you are supposed to have a positive net present value if you apply discount rate, required rate return lower than internal rate return. So IRR is very meaningful in terms of uh, deciding whether you wanna take the project or not if you have IRR and uh, cost of capital, required rate return. Right. So if you compare IRR and recovery return, cost of capital, and the return is higher, then IRR is higher, then you want to take the project. As if you project take the project when the MPV is positive. Okay. Any questions? Professor, I have a question about uh, when we talk about the spot rate, I understand the concept, but I was confused about the, uh, the 15th question. It said we can figure out the price of bond X 
but I think we need some other factors to figure out the price of bond X. Yeah. Um, price of bond, the price of bond is market price, right? The purchase, the purchase price of bond. So uh, basically we assume that we have a bond price of in the market, right? So once we know bond price of the market, right? The bond price of market is not based on the um, simple in discount rate, but based on the, uh, as I said, some spot rate for each term. So, um, you know, when you, the bond investors or purchase the bond, they do not consider simply, um, they do not calculate the, uh, the, the future cash flow numbers and discount the numbers to put uh, to set the price. They simply it just go, the price is decided depending on the demand and the supply. So bond price is just, uh, kind of uh, like a stock price. If you demand uh, uh, there's more demand for spot bond than supply, that the bond price goes up, right? So then, based on the price. and the yield maturity can be calculated, right? So one thing should be given to us, right? The what is given to us is the market price of the bond. The once we have a market price bond, then based on the coupon payments, we can calculate the yield maturity of the bond. So if we do not have the uh, yield maturity, if we do not have the market price, there's no way to get, we have two uh, axes, right? Two axes that we have, we have no, no way to calculate the, uh, the, the, yeah. So based on the demand and supply, the uh, bond price could be set in the market. So then based on the market, uh, based on the market price and the coupon payments of the bond and the maturity, and we can calculate uh, the, um, the, 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 the maturity. So the maturity is a kind of an internal rate of it. So that's why it maturity is the implied rate of return implied so it is hide in the price it, it is hiding in the price market price, market price of the bond the yield market price yield maturity or so-called yield is not something um it, it's not something obvious it, it is something we should get from the calculation financial calculator or uh the excel okay okay thank you professor Okay. Uh, okay. So if you guys, some of you guys have a next class. So see you next week. Okay. See you next week, Tuesday. So if you have any questions, please send me an email. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.